Hi folks, welcome to the last quick video in our introduction to cell structure. In this video, we're gonna talk about the parts of eukaryotic cell that are involved in creating, processing, and sending proteins off to the correct locations in the cell. And that includes the nucleus and the attached endomembrane system. So just quick review, remember that we've talked about the cytoplasm and the cytoskeleton, which are the, give the cell structure and provide a site for metabolism. The plasma membrane, which we'll discuss in a future lecture, is the barrier between the inside of the cell and the outside world. And the other, the third main area is the nucleus, which is where our genetic material is stored. The nucleus is a membrane-bound organelle, and contained within it are the chromatin, um, which is the term we use to describe DNA and it, its associated wrapping proteins. Um, chromatin is the form that DNA takes um, for most of the cell's life. We only observe the stereotypical chromosomes right before and shortly after the cell divides. Also within the nucleus is a structure called the nucleolus, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and the nuclear envelope, which is the name for the membrane around the nucleus, is continuous with what's referred to as the endomembrane system. The prefix endo means within or inner, so this is membrane that is kept within the cell. So this image is a really good summary slide of all of the components um, involved in making and processing proteins in the cell. Um, and we're going to be looking at it section by section as we move through this PowerPoint. All right, so we're gonna start with the nucleus. Please note that what you're seeing on this page is not an entire cell. This is just the nucleus. Um, the double-layered membrane around the nucleus, which is made of phospholipids, is called the nuclear envelope. It contains specialized cytoplasm, which because it's different in chemistry than the typical cytoplasm is called nucleoplasm. It also contains a darkly seeming structure called the nucleolus. And it's in this area that the ribonucleic acid that gives rise along with certain proteins to a molecular machine called the ribosome is built more about the ribosome in a bit. What you find with also within the nuclear envelope is chromatin. Chromatin can, is the word we use for DNA and packaging proteins. And it's a very loose organization of the DNA. It allows for information to be read from different parts of the chromosomes, which you can't do if it's all tightly wound up as a chromosome. Remember that short stretches or even longer stretches of DNA that code for proteins are called genes. Now, as I have said, DNA is only tightly packed into chromosomes right before and right after cell division. And this little video just takes our, the standard sort of X-shaped chromosome, which is actually, strictly speaking, two chromosomes that are joined together in the center, um, which is how we know that this is happening only before cell division. So in this video, what we're going to see is the DNA unspooling from 
the chromosome are essentially being pulled out from the chromosome to show you the histones, which is the name for the wrapping proteins, and then eventually ending up with a stretch of DNA that's marked off as a gene. So one of the important things about eukaryotic cells is that our DNA is stored inside the nucleus and we have these huge chromosomes or huge and each chromosome is a single piece of DNA that is, is so large it's actually um, in order to keep it from breaking you have to spool it around wrapping proteins um, so it's they're huge and they can't get outside of the nucleus. And in fact, when a cell copies its DNA and divides, um, the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope has to be dissolved in order for the two copies of the genetic material to move to opposite ends of what will be two cells. So we've got DNA, right? And the DNA doesn't leave the nucleus. So you might think, okay, how is it that we actually end up being able to make a protein from the mRNA? Because hopefully that sounds vaguely familiar from biochemistry. Well, inside the nucleus, the DNA is made into a disposable copy of the genetic material called messenger RNA. And messenger RNA is like all RNA, single-stranded. And messenger RNA um, is a much shorter piece of genetic material than a full chromosome. The messenger RNA is actually exported through, the messenger RNA is exported through pores in the nuclear membrane into the cytoplasm, um, which is where the proteins are actually built. In the cytoplasm, either attached to another membrane-bound organelle or floating freely, are these amazing machines called ribosomes. And the ribosome is capable of taking the information the genetic information in the messenger RNA and translating that into a different language, which is the language of amino acids, which remember are the monomers for proteins. All right, so this is another um, really useful, complicated, but really useful summary structure for the process of building proteins, the basic process. So in this image, we have a couple of different genes in the DNA. The DNA um, is opened by specific enzymes. So the double helix is opened and the bases on the inside are exposed and another enzyme transcribes the information in the DNA into a disposable copy in the form of messenger RNA. This process is called transcription because there's no change of molecular language here. Right, we've got de deoxyribonucleic acid language in DNA, and then we still have nucleic acid language. The messenger RNA transcript is then exported through a pore in the nuclear membrane. Right, so this is nucleus cytoplasm. This would be the nuclear envelope. And a ribosome, this molecular machine, will clamp down on top of the single-stranded messenger RNA and will translate 
right? So we're going to have a switch of languages now. Three nucleic acid bases at a time, which is called a codon, into the primary structure of the protein. So all of the rectangles at the bottoms represent amino acids. And that gives rise to what we refer to as a polypeptide. So this process of transcription and translation is also referred to as gene expression because you are expressing the information in the genes in a different way. And that's what this um, looped animation is showing you. So transcription, you're going from DNA to messenger RNA. It occurs in the nucleus. Translation occurs in the cytoplasm in, in consort with the ribosomes. And the information in the messenger RNA is translated into the language of amino acids. So ribosomes. Ribosomes are small, very small organelles compared to the nucleus, for example. And they're made of protein as well as ribosomal RNA. They are found free floating in the cytoplasm, which I'm not really showing you here, but there, there are some ribosomes floating around. Um, they're also attached to the outside of the nuclear envelope and to a membrane bound organelle that's directly connected to the nuclear envelope called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. More about that later. So the ribosomes are where protein synthesis actually takes place, right? That's where translation takes place. Here is a single ribosome, so we've zoomed way down. Um, we've got our messenger RNA here, and it is pulled through the two-part ribosome. So here's the bottom piece, and the lighter green area is the top piece. It's pulled through three mRNA bases at a time, and at the same time, another form of RNA, transfer RNA, which is the bilingual molecule. It speaks nucleic acid language on the bottom and amino acid language on the top. So it's, it's a bilingual dictionary that only translates one word. The tRNAs can only temporarily hydrogen bind if there is compatibility between the bases on the tRNA and the bases on the mRNA. When that happens, the tRNA is in place just long enough for the amino acid at the top to get knocked into the end of the growing amino acid chain. Right, and this process right here, that's dehydration synthesis, right? You're combining amino acid to another amino acid. And the ribosome is a ginormous molecular machine. It's an enzyme. It's the largest enzyme that I know of anyway. All right, so that's sort of the nuts and bolts of gene expression. The endomembrane system is the way that eukaryotic cells build, package, and then transport proteins, right? It starts with, the endomembrane system itself starts with the nuclear envelope. Then we proceed to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, so-called because it has ribosomes on it. Um, we also have smooth endoplasmic reticulum, a structure called the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body. You can call it 
either of those things. The Golgi's job is to act as a packaging and distribution center for proteins and other molecules in the cell. And so it produces these tiny membrane down um, baggies called vesicles. One specific kind of vesicle is called a lysosome. Um, more, again, more about that in a bit. All right, so endoplasmic reticulum. It is a mouthful. So let's break it down. We've got endo for inner plasm. I'm not sure this would be considered an absolutely dictionary worthy definition, but think of plasm as stuff. And when something is reticulated, it means it's folded. So we have the inner, inner folded stuff. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum is a set of membranes. Oops, that doesn't work. It's a set of membranes that have specialized cytoplasm inside. And so the messenger RNA transcripts are exported, um, some of them directly to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? It's called rough because it looks very rough when you look at it um, with an electron microscope. And that's because there are ribosomes on the outer side. So proteins are synthesized and as they are built, they are pushed down into the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then packaged into small transport vesicles. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is so-called, so this would be the smooth here, different color. Um, because there are no ribosomes. So it's a manufacturing facility, but it's for phospholipids, lipids, and other substances, not for proteins. So as I said, the endoplasmic reticulum, both smooth and rough, can form vesicles, which are membrane-bound tiny baggies that are used to transport material in the cell. More often than not, those transport vesicles are going to make a stop at the Golgi body. So the Golgi, which is the sort of green and yellow here, is described as a set of curved saccules. And unlike the endoplasmic reticulum, which although sometimes it doesn't look like this, it's all attached. So, you know, if you imagine putting your pencil down, you can get from one place to another, right? Um, and the same thing's true with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. With the Golgi body, the Golgi apparatus, each of these sacs is physically separate from the next. Again, you've got isolated chemistry inside those, sa those um, saccules. So, word to the wise, when you see U-L-E at the end of a science word, it often means tiny. So, tiny curved sacs. Um, it takes in protein lipid filled vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum and does additional processing. Maybe um, a couple of carbohydrate monomers are added to the lipid or to the protein, which is gonna increase the range of functions you can get. Um, the vesicles then new vesicles are formed, and the vesicles are passed from one location to the next until finally 
they come out on the opposite side of the Golgi body. At that point, the outside of the vesicle has a molecular tag so that a motor protein can pick it up and walk across the cytoskeleton inside the cell and drop the package that it's carrying off in exactly the right location. So one specialized kind of vesicle that we want you guys to be familiar with is called a lysosome. So remember that the prefix lice means to cut or break. And now we're gonna add another word bit. Some means body. So lysosomes, a lysosome means cutting body. And what is contained inside lysosomes are hydrolytic enzymes. So these are enzymes that are um, would be quite dangerous if they were in the cytoplasm because they're gonna take whatever they run into apart and um, the cell spent lots of ATP building itself up. So lysosomes in this image um, are represented by the green vesicles and the hydrolytic enzymes as the little dots inside. Um, lysosomes are really important because, well, for two reasons. First, they can engulf themselves, they can engulf and then break down worn out macromolecules that are found in the cell and so the, the monomers can be recycled and reused but they also play a really important role in our immune system. So the magenta colored cell that we're looking at is taking in a viral particle by a process called phagocytosis, which we'll talk about next week. Phagocytosis means uh, cell, the condition of cell eating. So literally is reorganizing this white blood cell, reorganizes its cytoskeleton to generate these big sort of blob-like arms that come up and engulf the virus. The virus is recognized by a specific set of proteins that are in the cell membrane. And those are, are shown here as these little arc-shaped molecules. Um, so after the white blood cell has consumed this virus particle, um, that membrane-bound vesicle with the viral the viron, viron, viron inside, fuses in step number two here with the lysosome and the hydrolytic enzymes in the lysosome proceed to take the virus apart, which is what we see here in number three. Any pieces of the virus, any nucleotides or amino acids uh, or fatty acids that can be reused are and then anything that can't be is essentially spit out on the other side of the cell. So that's a really important way that our immune system deactivates microbes that might harm us. All right so here's a written out summary for you. I'll let you guys read that at your leisure. And here is a visual summary, right? Um, one of the things I wanna make clear here is two terms, cis and trans. The Golgi is um, described as having a cis face and a trans face. Cis means same, trans means opposite. So the cis face of the Golgi faces the rough endoplasmic reticulum as well, and so the nucleus. The trans face is on the opposite side of the Golgi body and is the side that's closer to the plasma membrane. So this is also a nice summary slide because 
it can help you remember the process of gene expression as well as the packaging and distribution of proteins. Right, so we've got transcription of DNA to messenger RNA in the nucleus, export through the nuclear pores into the rough endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes located on top, which translate the mRNA into the primary structure of the protein. And as the protein is produced, it's being imported into what's referred to as the lumen or the inner area of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. As that process comes to a close, the process of initially making the protein, the protein is packaged up in a transport vesicle, which is a membrane bound, small membrane bound vesicle, and is exported or carried from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the cis face of the Golgi apparatus. The vesicle fuses with the first cis face and then processing, additional processing can take place. And that vesicle will be, the protein in, and the vesicle will be modified and exported from one Golgi cistern A. A cistern is a holding tank. So in this case, it's a holding tank where a lot more happens than just um, storage. All right, so here's the protein that was built. And this is a protein that is eventually going to end up being inserted in the cell membrane, which is what you can see at the end of this process here. All right, so the membrane-bound vesicles, whether they're secretory vesicles or any other kind, are phospholipid bilayer, just like the plasma membrane. And so when the vesicle touches the surface of the plasma membrane, it will fuse with it and become part of it. And so now the protein that was attached, the protein that was attached to this vesicle is now embedded in the plasma membrane. the discussion of the plasma membrane, um, which is one of the primary locations for homeostasis. I will talk to you then.